D-mannose, most recurrent UTI patients know about this. It is a natural occurring sugar that can be formulated into a supplement in powder or capsule form and is used to try to prevent or reduce the occurrence of UTIs. Okay, I wanted to make sure that you guys were aware of the latest in recurrent UTI research. So recurrent UTIs that affects one in four women and it's defined as three or more UTIs per year or two or more UTIs in six months is extremely common. You guys, it's probably one of the most common, the number one thing that I see in my office. And it sucks, it's annoying. I know, cause I have recurrent UTIs too, okay? So I get it, I get you. d mannose most recurrent UTI patients know about this. It is a natural occurring sugar that can be formulated into a supplement in powder or capsule form and is used to try to prevent or reduce the occurrence of UTIs. It is thought to work by blocking the attachment of bacteria to the bladder wall most notoriously E. coli. E. coli is the most common cause of all UTIs that occur. So early data has been promising, albeit it is limited by size and by quality of the research and meta-analysis or bigger analysis has not been convincing to show if it truly is beneficial or not. Therefore, a large placebo-controlled, randomized, double-blinded study has finally been done and published. You guys, the best type of research is just that. It is randomized, so it's random. It is placebo-controlled, meaning we are testing our product with a placebo, and it's double-blinded. Double-blinded means that if I'm participating in the research as a patient, I don't know whether I got the actual drug, in this case, D-mannose or placebo. Furthermore, if I am the researcher involved in the project and following up with patients and getting their results and recording data, I don't know whether that patient got placebo or D-mannose. This helps to eliminate bias, bias from the patient that might think, well, I'm on D-mannose, so I really want this to work, and bias from the researcher who may really want these things to work. And so again, double-blinded, randomized, placebo-controlled is the best type of quality research. So this research published this week in JAMA, the Journal of the American Medical Association involved about 600 women who had recurrent UTIs and randomized one-to-one, -one, so about 300 in each group, to either placebo or D-mannose, two grams daily. They looked at them for six months, which is a moderate period, but six months is a decent amount of time when you're suffering from recurrent UTIs. So when they looked at six months, unfortunately, they didn't find much. D-mannose did not lower the risk of UTIs, meaning the same amount of UTIs occurred, whether you got D-mannose or placebo, the same risk. And when they met by UTI, they looked at two things. Their main or primary outcome were suspected UTI. This means the patient had symptoms and thought it, it was seemed like their usual UTI symptoms, and whether or not they actually went on to get a culture or testing or not wasn't actually looked at. So they looked at what they call suspected UTIs. And that was the primary outcome because for patients, from the patient side of things, that was like the main burden of quality of life. It's like, do I get these symptomatic episodes? Okay. And in some cases we know very well, cultures or further lab testing isn't always done. So they looked at that as a primary outcome. And whether you got D-mannose or placebo, you were just as likely to have a suspected UTI. They also did look at culture proven UTI, so substantiated by microbiological testing, and D mannose did not lower or reduce the episodes of culture proven UTIs when compared to placebo in this six month evaluation. The other thing they looked at, among other secondary endpoints, is duration of UTI symptoms. Unfortunately, D mannose lost out again. It did not 
decrease the duration of UTI symptoms that patients experience when compared to placebo. So in conclusion, the authors basically say, listen, we need to stop recommending D-mannose as a UTI prevention method. This is huge. I routinely will recommend D-mannose. This very well is likely to change what I recommend going forward and what UTI sufferers may end up using. So let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your comments. What are your thoughts? If you've had huge, huge success with D-Manos for your recurrent UTIs, I really want to hear from you. Okay, let us know. Drop that comment below. Make sure, however, that you subscribe, like this video, and share it far and wide because this is huge news. And join me every week for all things down there right here. Bye.